good morning to all uh, myself Ali, i am the host for today's session iot plug and play with azure so we will start with the session before moving ahead into session let's have a small introduction about our today's organization etc community our etc community is for all who are interested in various emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, cloud, DevOps, and many more. To get updates and to know in depth about the technologies we provide, you can follow our meetup group, which is Emerging Technology Community. For that, you just need to install meetup app on your phone and follow our community. Small code of conduct, which you all need to follow. Please note that you can't take screenshot of the presentation and can't do screen recording. If you need recording, then simply subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will be sharing the recording of this session on your YouTube channel soon. Also, YouTube channel link will be dropped in the chat box later. Agenda for the session. The session will make you understand better how to plug and play IoT connectivity solution design to simplify IoT development. Today's speaker for the session is Mr. Navjoti Varua. Navjoti sir has 15 plus years of experience in software development, consulting and architecting. He is Microsoft certified trainer and currently working on cloud platform in the field of AI and application. Now you can grow professionally by adding the latest technology skills with Microsoft various certification. You can enroll for any of this training program with us where you will be experiencing live interactive sessions with the best industry MCTs. Trust us and we will deliver the best. Now upcoming sessions for in Global Azure 2022. We have three more sessions for today. Titles and timings are mentioned on the screen. If you want to attend any of the session, you can. I will be dropping attendee link for you all in the chat box. Then we have special offer. For you all, we, uh, we are providing Microsoft certification training on discounted rate. For all the advanced courses at just Rs. 22,500 plus GST, which includes hands-on lab, free exam voucher, free MOC, assessment, and practice test and we, you will get to train by our best MCTs. For inquiry, you can drop us mail. I will be sharing our official email ID in chat box later. Next slide, please. Do follow us on social media platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter to get updated related to the webinars and workshop we do. Links will be shared in the chat box. Now I would like to hand over the mic to Navjoti sir. Thank you all. So you can go ahead with the session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for introducing me. Very good morning to all of you. So let me set the context for the today's uh, training. Let me get PPT first. So today we are going to talk about IoT plug and play with Microsoft Azure. So there are a few services from the Microsoft Azure that you can use to build IoT solutions. The IoT as a solution is not something new that we are going to look at today, but yes, the new innovations that has come into the IoT solutions from the Microsoft Azure to enhance the productivity of developer, that is the primary focus of this particular session. How we have done 
or how we have implemented the IoT solution in the past and how you do it today. So it is all about, again, I'm saying enhancing the IoT developer productivity by doing less to get more. My name is Nabajoti Boru. I am an MCT, worked as an AVP technology at Synergetics. So let's get started with the today's session. <clears throat> now we all of us know how cloud is benefiting us in multiple contexts, in multiple workload, in multiple solutions areas. and how Microsoft is taking it forward by setting up their data center across the globe. People started working with Microsoft Azure with their respective workload in context of building hybrid solutions, in context of building cloud native solutions and so on and so forth. But yes, today, as a developer or as an architect or as an IT pro, I can connect to those 66 region across the globe in order to deploy, in order to configure, in order to manage the cloud services. Now, having said that, when you go and start working with the cloud services. The people started talking about how you are going to protect your services, protect your workload. Then we need to get into the security or compliance. Now security and compliance is a big domain. What Microsoft is currently working extensively to optimize all the aspect the security can address while you are running your application workload in complete protected environment. And that would be aligned or that would be aligned with the organization compliance and certification. So net net, Microsoft Azure allow us to distribute deployment, distributed deployment across the globe and allow us to protect our resources, whether it could be an applications or a data and align with the organization's policies, compliance, that I can run this workload smoothly on the cloud platform by benefiting what cloud supposed to give us. What basically the core pillar of the cloud computing. Now, as I said, the physical data center that is managed by Microsoft across the globe is highly protected from unauthorized access, unauthorized malicious activities and so on and so forth. But today by sitting in one place, one corner of the world, I should be able to deploy, I should be able to configure my applications by putting them in any geographic area or geopolitical areas across the globe. So globally, we are connected to those physical data center where I want to manage my workload. Irrespective what type of workload that we would be managing, we would be deploying and we would be monitoring in a day to day basis. So coming back to the 
fundamentals of Microsoft Cloud plat Cloud Computing Platform. Today we are going to talk about the workload like Internet of Things, but in general we must understand whatever we are going to discuss in context of Microsoft Azure only. So we must understand what Microsoft Azure is offering or Microsoft Cloud Platform is offering at this moment to put yourself into the context going forward. So today as an on-premise IoT developer, we manage our all applications and data in a physical data center, right from application to networking. You are responsible for managing them from top to bottom. But when you think of getting them onto the cloud, that is Microsoft Azure, we can pick a type of deployment model like infrastructure as a service where we have to go and manage application and operating system, including the respective dependency for my applications along with the data. But provisioning the virtual machines, working with the underlying infrastructure and the storage and the networking is going to be managed by the cloud vendor. In our case, it would be Microsoft Azure. So moving from infrastructure as a service to platform as a service where we do have very less work as a developer. I just need to focus on my application and their respective data. The rest. The complete infrastructure is going to come out of the box that I don't have to manage those infrastructure. I don't have to explicitly go and install the required dependency to run my applications it would be pre-created for us i just need to go and focus on my applications how quickly i can make them up and running on the cloud and finally software as a service that is completely the entire stake of applications including the dependencies, including the data would be managed by the vendors. So in our case, the vendor could be Microsoft. So we get a ready-made application that we can just go and launch those applications based on the subscription and start using. Yes, you will be having your own data while you will be using those applications. But as far as managing those services, including the infrastructure, including the applications is not our job. It would be done by the vendor from where the SaaS is being subscribed in a day-to-day -day basis. And you can continue with that application as long as you want. Tomorrow, if you think of do not want to continue these applications. We can stop subscriptions and let it go. So coming to the point. Now, this is a kind of background that I want to give you because what we are going to go and talk about. It is based on the core functionality of the cloud computing that is offered by Microsoft Azure at this moment. So since we can build the different workload on Microsoft Azure by using different services and the resources. And you are going to see a list of resources under a specific categories. The category may be media and CDN, compute service, application platforms, developer service, data intelligence, analytics, and IoT. 
So our primary focus would be analytics and IoT. So we'll not go into the analytics also, but the primary focus here would be the IoT. As you can see on the screen. So when you start developing a solutions under the a banner of IoT, then we need to go and consume the list of services from Microsoft Azure to build that solution. So talking about IoT Hub, machine learning, stream analytics, data lake, data lake store and power BI's, data catalog, SD inside and so on and so forth, including the data factories. So all may not be used by a single IoT solutions, and we need to figure out in what context those services could be used from your IoT solutions. But there would be primary services that is going to come inherently to the IoT solutions that cannot be avoided when you build IoT solutions any given point in time. And that is something that we will be discussing today. So then let's get started with the, today's focus point is all about Azure IoT, Internet of Things. Now going back to the statistics of what Microsoft will invest in the near future in the field of IoT to optimize or to bring the efficiency in an operational activity within an organization in a day-to-day -day basis. And IoT is a workload that is not going to use by a one vertical of the business verticals. It could be used across the business verticals right from manufacturing to hospitalities. Including the government. They want to use IoT to increase or to optimize the day to day operations, the operational efficiency what we talked about and to cut the cost by automating the entire workflow by using iot services so when you talk about implementing an iot service as i said there would be a different vertical in fact the people started using the IoT solutions, implementing IoT solutions using Microsoft Azure service in the field of manufacturing, energy, healthcare, retail, and transportation and logistics. There are multiple use cases coming from those vendors, those organizations who has basically gone and implement the robust IoT solutions using Microsoft Cloud services, IoT services. So coming back to the fundamental of IoT architecture using Microsoft Cloud. So when you basically try and understand the main component of an IoT architecture is basically composed of three components. The first component of an IoT architecture would be the device who is supposed to collect telemetries and send it to the cloud. Now, when those telemetries would be would be arrived on the cloud on a particular resource or service from the Microsoft Azure, what need to be done on those telemetries? Maybe getting inside to the telemetries and the data that I'm talking about and make it meaningful to the business. 
not only that, when you have to react to the data any given point in time, like for example, I'm detecting the anomalies of incoming data. So by having an anomalies in my data, I need to immediately react to this data at real time by calling an actions. By anticipating that particular anomalies or system warning by calling an actions, by respond, uh, responding to that particular activities by calling an action. So that's how I say that this is the primary three components. So without a device, IoT is not going to exist. So you have the device. There are different type of devices connecting through the cloud gateways. These are different way of getting connected to the cloud. But once you are connecting to the cloud, you start sending telemetries. But the cloud has to figure out based on the workload types, the use cases, based on the vertical, how you want to get inside to those telemetries and make it meaningful to the business and subsequently how we can react to those data. If you put a conditions by creating a threshold on the data, if the if your data crosses the threshold limit, so you need to respond to that by executing an actions by delegating that actions to an underlying service from Microsoft Azure or maybe outside of the Azure to react to this action. So net net again. The simple architecture of an IoT implementation on the cloud is going to always deal with the three component, but yes, if you step inside the component that you get to see there would be multiple services to help. those components with their respective functionalities. So there may be multiple service that is going to be associated with the inside. There would be multiple service that would be associated with taking actions and so on and so forth. So when you talk about the IoT ecosystem in context of product from the cloud and as a devices. So when you talk about the devices, apart from the traditional device, today we talk about something called IoT edge devices. What do you mean by that? So we always look up to the cloud for modern computing. Modern computing, maybe it could be analytics, it could be stories, it could be security and compliance. On what basis we consume service from the Microsoft Azure? But what the new concept has come today that rather than going into the cloud, you can bring back those compute capabilities from the cloud back to the on-premise that could be sitting next to you. Like, for example, you want to analyze the data that is being collected by your IoT device. So typically, I would go to the Microsoft Azure to analyze those data, but rather going into Microsoft Azure to analyze the data, I can do it right next to me by creating IoT edge devices. So there would be the configurations that IoT edge device is going to have. Like any other traditional IoT devices. The IP enable IoT device who can connect to the Microsoft Azure and start sending telemetries whenever they feel like whenever they collect those telemetries. 
Now, apart from that, the Microsoft has come up with the other type of devices like Azure Sphere, Windows IoTs, and Azure RTOS, real-time operating system. So the developer community today is going to make use of different SDK that is offered by Microsoft that they can quickly develop applications to run on those devices and start sending telemetries to the Microsoft Cloud through Azure IoT Hub operating data by using Azure IoT Centrals that will come from the software as a service, the ready-made application. We just need to do a plug and play with the IoT Central to showcase how the IoT solutions can be built quickly using Microsoft Cloud Services. And talking about resources like Time Series Insight, that allow us to present data graphically. The graphically in the sense like, if I'm reading data from a device at real time, I can monitor those data by creating a dashboard, creating a graph. Not only that, Time Series Insight also can look into the inside of the data. So essentially we can analyze and store and manage all data that you have collected through the respective devices. And another important component under the Azure IoT product would be digital twins. Now digital twins is a set of properties that is going to be used by set of property and configuration that is going to be used by a device before they can send data to the cloud and through those properties which is being presented as a digital twins we can control the devices not only controlling the device, how the device is going to behave. So all kind of behavioral definitions should be written in the device twin. So developer can step into the device twin and create respective properties to maintain the behavior of those devices in their respective workload they want to bring into the cloud. So collectively, out of the box, we are going to get multiple services, rather building from those services from the scratch. We just need to go and take them on board from our IoT solutions any given point in time. And these are the service as what I am speaking is all managed service. We don't need to go back and start figuring out where this service is going to run, what kind of installations and infrastructure to be configured and so on and so forth. You just need to start using those services from your workload anytime from now. And that could be the one of the benefit of the cloud computing because most of the time we work with the managed services, whether it is an IoT solutions or AI solutions or maybe app modernizations in today in is one of the most popular solutions that that we can talk so when you revisit that simple architecture that we discussed in the previous deck,
we need to go into the detail of this simple architecture. If one of my device, it could be any device that can be hooked into a, anything. Reading data or reading temperature from a room, from a building, from a car or from a factories. That could be a thing. So I am reading temperature and humidity from a particular building or from a particular room using a device. So it could be any environment. It could be any data that my sensor can collect across the vertical. But when that sensor is collecting data through the underlying device, they need to send the data to the Microsoft Azure and Microsoft Azure has to receive the data as a gateway to the data. So in the IoT solutions, in an IoT architecture, the IoT hub would be the gateway to receive data. But the one thing that we must know that we can only send data from the underlying device to an IoT hub if that device is getting registered on the IoT hub. And the registration of the device on that IoT hub can be done by using another cloud service called hub device provisioning service. So it help us to do the registration of the device, not only one, but hundreds of device can be registered on top of the IoT, IoT hub before they can send telemetries. And it is completely automations, like without any human interactions, without any manual interventions by going into the IoT hub. So automating registrations of the IoT device on top of the IoT hub is being done by a service called IoT hub device provisioning service. And once your device is registered, whether it is manually or in an ideal situations, it would be hub device provisioning service who's supposed to register your device on top of an IoT hub. You are ready to send the telemetries to the IoT hub using some kind of credentials the both party understand. And then subsequently it will take us to the, the rest of the component of an IoT architecture like inside and the actions what we discussed in the previous deck. So since the IoT hub is the core component from the Microsoft Azure, or maybe to begin with an IoT solutions on the cloud, we need to start with an IoT hub who receive data from the who receive data from the IoT devices. And the quick properties of IoT hub, what we are discussing at this moment, bidirectional communication. So it's it can connect millions of devices and receive data from those devices at real time. Developing applications and running on that device can be done using multi language, including the open source SDK as well. In order to send and receive data to and from on device, you can make use of those protocol like HTTP, AMQPS, MQTTS, and so on and so forth. 
And beyond the telemetries, you can receive command on the device also. Like for example, my IoT hub go back to the device and say stop sending telemetries. I'm not interested. The telemetries that has come to come come from that device. You can always go and disconnect that device. You can go always go and instruct that device not to send the telemetries anymore until the IoT hub want them to send that telemetries. That is something command. Device management and the device twins and the queries and the two jobs. So all is being supported through the IoT hub. Enterprise skills and integrations when IoT hub is being put in the scale. So it can handle the billions of messages. You can create multiple unit of compute under the IoT hub to enhance the scalability of what we are talking about. And when the data arrive on the IoT hub, we can create multiple route for those data to go back to the different IoT services in order to process them. And as I say that IoT hub cannot randomly send data, uh, IoT device cannot randomly send data to the IoT hub until those device is being authenticated by the IoT hub before they can send data. This is all about end-to-end -end securities that we are talking about, TLS, X509 support, and so on and so forth. Working with the shared access policies, what kind of activities that you can operate on the IoT hub, you know, whether you are an admin or you can only send or you can only receive data on the IoT hub, and all can be configured on top of an IoT hub as a policies under the end-to-end -end securities. The other service in the previous deck, I already explained what is provisioning service that is going to help us to register the IoT device on top of an IoT hub without using manual registrations. It can be done in bulk. It is not just a registering a one device, but it could be a list of device can be registered before they can send data to the IoT app with the help of device provisioning service. It's all about automations. So what we have discussed in the previous DAC, it is being represented diagrammatically. So what is the possible functionalities under the banner of an IoT hub, but we must understand what is the fundamental of IoT hub who's supposed to receive data that has come from the millions of devices. The telemetries that I was referring to. So the kind of communications that could be device to cloud or cloud to device, or maybe calling a method on the device directly. This is called direct methods and working with the configurations and the properties to control the device using something called device twin. And uh, how IoT hub can redirect those data to a custom endpoints like storage container, event hub, service bus, queues and service bus topic. And of course, directly putting them into the backend service. The backend services is nothing but a collection of service who can analyze or who can basically store or who can basically process those data and make it meaningful output for the business. So, when you talk about 
a plugin plays uh, features the innovative features on top of the traditional development that we do inside an IoT. So IoT plug and play enable the solution builder to integrate IoT device with their backend solutions without any manual configuration. So it means if you remember those old days when you try to add a device to the Windows operating system, we need to install that device. Whether it could be mouse or a pin printer that I want to connect to my laptop or a desktop, so I need to install the driver because it was not plug and play. So we need a manual intervention, the manual configurations. We need to go back and tell the operating system about the new device that I'm going to connect with. So these are additional job that we need to do, but today we simply go and connect a mouse to the system. It start working without installing the underlying device, uh, the, 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 you know, uh, driver. And that is exactly an example of plug and play. And this is what happening in the IoT solution also. So you just plug a device and start sending data to the IoT hub after it is getting authenticated by an IoT hub. So you do not because you work in a particular model. So your model is getting exposed or published or announced by the device itself and that is being subscribed by an IoT hub at real time. So we don't need any manual interventions and that is what the plug and play. So idea of using the IoT plug and play is all about enhance the developer productivities. I talked about in the beginnings. Doing less than getting more. Right, so rather you do manually, rather you do everything from top to bottom and so on and so forth. So that is the bottom line of IoT plug and play and we are going to see and we are going to explore how practically it can be implemented. So at the core of the IoT plug and play is a device model that a device used to advertise its capability to an IoT plug and play enable application. So the application who will understand the plug and play features, which is running as a backend for the IoT device that quickly they understand those devices and start communicating with the device. So when you talk about a model, the model is structured as a set of elements or a component that's defined as a properties, telemetries and the command. So what properties talks about? The properties that represent the read only or writable state of the device or other entities. For example, a device serial number may be read only property and a target temperature on a thermostat may be writable properties. You want to set a target temperature, the thermostats can produce and that you can receive subsequently on the cloud. Telemetries, that is the data emitted by the device, whether data is a regular stream of a sensor reading or an occasional error or an information masses, all can be treated under the telemetries. The command, the last one inside the model that describe the functions or an operations that can be done on the devices, that can be executed on the devices. For example, a command, from the cloud to the device can be a reboot the device 
or reboot a gateway or take a picture using the remote cameras and so on and so forth. So you have to send a command from your IoT hub, through your IoT hub, to execute an activities at device level. So all is being defined in the model of IoT plug and play. So this is the complete architecture, how this IoT plug and play is going to help us. What is the inner working of the IoT plug and play? Now, if you start with the device right here on the top, because this is the first component of an IoT solutions. Without a device, we are not supposed to get data. So a device builder implement the code to run an IoT device using one of as your IoT, IoT device SDK. So device SDK help the device to build. An application through which we can connect to an IoT hub with security. Register the device with an IoT hub and announce the model ID. That identifies the collection of. The data model interface. The device implement. This is what the model ID that we are talking about. And beyond that. This model also talks about. Synchronize the property defined in the. Definition language which is used to create the model. Between the device and your IoT hub. Adding command handler for the command defined in the DT DL or maybe send telemetries to the IoT hub. And beyond this traditional device, we have been talking about IoT edge device or an IoT edge gateway devices. So an IoT Edge Gateway act as an intermediary to connect the IoT plug and play device that cannot connect directly to the IoT hub. That could be a leaf device, what we are talking about. So the plug and play feature should be implemented on the IoT Edge Gateway who can transform or who can basically Translate the capability of IoT plug and play from this leaf device to the IoT edge gateway. It's just working as an interface between IoT hub and the underlying devices. And IoT edge gateway device or IoT edge devices is going to go and run an IoT plug and play module. Now what is module? So in edge modules through an edge modules. That you would be deployed. On top of an IoT edge device. It's nothing but the business logic on the edge. So as your IoT edge modules are the smallest unit of computations managed by IoT edge and can contain as your services like as your stream analytics stories as your machine learning and so on and so forth so you can run all of them locally on top of an iot edge device what i was referring to in the beginning the other hand on the cloud we are going to have this iot hub these are the component of an iot plug and play architecture we already talk about what exactly the IoT hub does. And then finally we have the backend solution. So a backend solutions is going to monitor and control the connected device by interacting with digital twins in the IoT hub. 
So you can make use of one of the service SDK to implement your backend solutions. To understand the compatibility of connected device. The solutions backend. Is going to retrieve the model ID. The device registered with the IoT hub. It is going to use the model ID to retrieve the interface definitions from the model repository. It's going to use the model parser to extract information from the interface definitions and so on and so forth. And the backend solutions also can use information from the interface definition to read property values reported by the devices. Update writable properties on the device. Call command implemented by the devices. Understand the format of telemetry sent by the devices and so on and so forth. So net net this architecture talks about. How quickly we can get on to the IoT solutions using Microsoft. As your IoT hub. In order to communicate with the underlying devices, whether it could be a traditional device or it could be a IoT edge device. By announcing the model, how the IoT hub on what model the IoT hub is going to communicate with your underlying device. So the definitions that I'm talking about would be written in a form of JSON, and that is what the model that I'm talking about. So model is going to redefine how the communications between the device and IoT hub is going to be established. So what we discuss So what we discussed in the previous deck by using different component that interconnections of those component to implement the IoT plug and play, which is the focus point of this today's uh, session, is being represented diagrammatically through this deck. So whoever the device builder, the device builder means the developer who's supposed to write an application to run on top of the devices that they can collect telemetry and send it to the cloud. And the primary job of the device builder would be creating the device model, authoring the device model, what I was talking about in a form of JSON. They can publish or they can announce that model to the cloud. IoT hub. So they will be sending an, a device IDs represented by that model that I'm talking about to go back to the IoT hub. And that model that I'm talking about is going to be stored somewhere on the local folder or maybe on the cloud. We need to configure that. From where this device model would be picked up, the repository that we are talking about by the cloud to interpret. The definition of the model to a target IoT hub. And of course, those device need to be certified device by the Azure certified devices by looking at the catalog that has come from Microsoft Azure. And we need to by by having that the model is responsible to enable the IoT plug and play support to the backend solution. The backend solutions will be given the model IDs. And by having the model ID, they can resolve the model. How 
your device is being presented to the backend solution, that backend solution start using the model ID to interact with that particular device. And the solutions can subsequently go and process data, creating dashboard, creating underlying service to take an action on this data. That is a complete different things, but yes, what we are going to see today, what is that IoT plug and play model who can control everything about the device in order to make them smoothly working with the backend solutions that is going to run on the cloud? Because the backend solutions, the target backend solutions need to know about the device, that they can operate the device accordingly other than you have to keep going and manually configuring every now and then but you are automating the process by announcing the device model to the backend solutions up front that we don't have to keep coming back and keep configuring one at a time Okay, so having said that, now we just need to go and try and explore the few things in context of IoT plugin play. So that would be a kind of demos that you will be experiencing to just a technical component, I'll put them together to work with. To work with IoT plug and play with your respective devices. So I will take you to my dev environment. So here I am in the so I can say IOT IoT plug and play. So I'm just creating a dashboard here. I'm currently in my Azure subscription. If I go to the all service, and if I go to the section of Internet of Things. So we can see the list of services under the Internet of Things. So what is the point of discussion that we have we are having at this moment? So we talked about the different services from the cloud. The two of them was prominent in the 
simple architecture of an IoT solutions. One is the IoT hub and another was IoT hub device provisioning service, what we talked about. So the another, I can say that IoT central application, that is basically a software as a service based applications that we can quickly showcase how IoT services can be put together using a plug and play devices to simulate something and then can be showcased in front of our customer pretty quickly for any verticals where the iot is being implemented in for any verticals the iot is being implemented in today's context but what i'm going to do what is the fundamental need that is the IoT hub. So we need an IoT hub to begin with. So here we go with an IoT hub first. So we'll create an IoT hub because that is the component who actually connect us to the underlying device. So I'll create a resource group. I will give the name of my hub. And I will keep the rest of the things as a default. And I'm creating the IoT hub. So deployment is in progress. The another service that we talked about as your IoT device provisioning service through which we can provision a device on top of an IoT hub. So I'll go and create. I pick up in the same resource group. DPS. I'm just going with the default. For the rest of the properties while I'm creating the device provisioning service. So I'll go to the device provisioning service. I can pin it to my dashboard. Similarly, I can go to my, yeah, so IoT hub is still going on. So once you're done with this deployment that we need to connect the IoT hub with the DPS because DPS is responsible for registering device on top of an IoT hub. So I pin that also. So this is the two service that I quickly deployed. One is DPS and one is the IoT hub. So I go to the DPS because DPS is responsible for registering a device automatically. On top of an IoT hub, the device can start sending telemetries to the IoT hub. So I can go and link to the IoT hub. There is a link to an IoT hub. I can go and add this. I can see. My IoT hub. That we have created. Some time back. 
I'm trying to link that. My IoT Hub 007. This is being updated. So you can see that this is what the link IoT Hub from the dashboard. And the another thing that we need to go and do. So while this IoT hub uh, device provisioning service will go and enroll. An IoT device on top of an IoT hub. So what is going to be the ID? What is the name of the device? So we will go to the manage enrollment. OK, so we'll go to the manage enrollment. And I will be going to an add individual enrollment. And I'll be selecting the semantic keys. So you know what mechanism that would be used by the device to communicate with an IoT hub. So using a semantic keys. And that would be auto generated by the device creation process. That your device could use that. Particular key. The key is going to be generated. In some time from now, once you save that. And I can go and. Give the name of the. Device. So here, suppose I'm giving the name of the device called my PNP plug and play device. That is the device that I'm going to register. On top of an IoT hub, the device can send data to the IoT hub once the registration is done automatically, rather go going and doing manual registration on top of an IoT hub. So we can go and make use of the same IDs, the name. The registration ID and the IoT Hub device ID can be seen. And automatically they pick up the target IoT Hub where. This particular device is going to be registered in the process of enrollment. So with that we can go and save this new enrollment. So we can refresh and we can see under the individual enrollment. We are going to go and see. My device PNP device PNP devices if you go there. And this is the primary key that I was talking about that would be used. The semantic keys that we are talking about that would be used in order to interact with the device to an IoT hub. So now we need to get that device. Now we cannot get a real device to this particular session, but we would be working with some kind of simulator who can start sending telemetries. And at the same time, the device is going to publish, device is going to announce the model that we talked about, the plug in play model using the plug in play model using um, what do you call uh, the JSON representations that we talked about. All right, so I'll go to this simulated device that is being developed using .NET application, so I'll open that one. 
Visual Studio 2019. And I'm going to go and open that project. So there is a device name called thermostat who's supposed to send the telemetries in a form of temperature to the IoT hub. That is what the project that the, the, the code that is going to run on the target device. That is the code that we are bringing in. So, now few configurations that we have to do. So, this is the thermostat, the device that we are referring to. Now there is uh, your uh, there is uh, a folder called models, and you can see the thermostat dot JSON, and this is the model that we are talking about. In fact, temperature controller, you know, this is something that we are talking about at this moment. So this is basically going to talk about the IoT plug and play, the component that we talked about. The component would be start from the telemetries. That is what we said already. This would be the type telemetries, type properties, the type command okay you can see if you go through this particular model that i'm talking about this will give you what exactly and how your backend solution whoever is running on the cloud would be working on this particular model so model is being exposed model is being announced by the device itself So some point in time, the device is going to pick up this particular model and send it to the backend solutions using the model IDs that we saw in the beginning, the model IDs that we are talking about. All right, so, but before we connect this device, it's a simulated device written in .NET, but am I, as I say that this is going to be, this is going to go and use by your device while the device is going to run in order to send the telemetries, but this is going to do two things. It's not only go and send the data or telemetries to the IoT hub. At the same time, the device need to be registered. OK, as so a device need to be registered. So there are a few things that we need to configure now. So we can go to the project and the thermostat properties, the device properties. 
we can go to the debug. A few things is being already configured. I have done it before, but we'll be changing few things based on the new deployment that we did. Okay, so it says I need the information of IoT device DSP endpoint. Now, from where do I get this endpoint? So I can go to my DSP device provisioning service. In the overview, I can see the global device endpoint is global.azure.device provisioning net, and this is exactly what is being configured already. This is what we can see. The another configurations that we need to do the IoT Hub device DSP ID scope. Now we just need to go and change this. The scope ID would be different because I'm currently working with the different entities of the DSP. So I will get the scope ID right below. This is the scope ID. I copied the scope ID and I go and put it against the DSP ID scope. The second, a third one, it's talking about IoT Hub device, DSP device IDs. Now, this is something from where do I going to get it? So I can go to my enrollment and the individual enrollment that we talked about. And I just go into that particular device. And we can see this is the ID of this device that we can see. And of course, the primary key, what we can see right from here itself. This is the two information that I need to encode it back into my device. OK, so. So I put that one and I copy the primary key from here. Then I go back. And this is what we have the device IoT hub. Device DP uh, DPS device key, so I will replace the existing key. with a new key. So uh, let us understand what this particular device code is going to do for us. Number one, this code will go and register the device with a name called my PNP device on top of IoT Hub. That is the step number one. And that would be done automatically rather going and doing it manually. I'll just go and explain that what we mean by manual registration. So if I go to the IoT hub. If I go to the IoT hub. And if I go to the device management section, so we have something called devices. If I click on the devices. I don't see any devices at this moment. I need to go and add device manually, and that is something that I do not want to do because until we add a device, the dead device who's supposed to send the telemetries back to the cloud is not possible. So first thing first. So first we need to register a device. As I said, I can do it manually from this window, but we are not going to do it manually. We are going to do through automations using the device code and device is responsible itself to registering them on top of an IoT hub and start sending telemetry right away. And we have given the name of this device. 
already in the configuration files that you can see in the configuration of my devices. OK, and now I can go back to my backend solution. So I'll go and say IoT Explorer. I just open that backend solution who's supposed to receive whatever would be sent by your IoT device. So I'm just making everything to just make everything cleaned up. And this is my backend solution who's supposed to interact with the device and who's supposed to interact with the IoT hub. So using the IoT hub connection string. So if I want to go and monitor my IoT hub, what is happening and how the IoT hub is controlling my device using the plug and play, that need to be incorporated in the IoT hub. So what we are going to do first, we are going to go to the IoT hub and we are going into the security setting sections and we are going to get into the access policy. And we are going after the IoT hub owner. And I'm getting the connection string of the IoT hub owner. And then I try and add the connections here that my backend is going to go. You can see the host name, shared access policies of the IoT hub owner, and then I save that. So there is no device as of now registered on top of an IoT hub at this moment. So the devices is empty because we have to run that applications who can go and register a device under the IoT hub. But we are talking about the IoT hub plug and play. So IoT hub plug and play has to go and build on top of the model. So what we'll go and do it, we'll go and configure the location from where they can pick up that model. So I'll go to the local folder and I'll go and pick the folder from the IoT PNP. IoT hub, go to sample, PNP device sample, thermostat model, and I go and save that. So this is the we look for your model definitions in the following order. Please drag and drop to change it and click add to enable more ways to can resolve your model definition. So the model definition sometime back that we talked about, this is what is sitting inside that folder. The model definition is this one. This is the model definition. I said go and get that model definitions from that particular folder under the folder called model. 
to the backend solution that I saved it that is being configured. OK, and now. So we have to go and. Say the view the device as of now there is no device is being registered. In fact, if I go to the. IoT hub and devices also. So you don't see any devices. Now when I'm going to run this application. And this application is going to use this configuration. That is already being configured somewhere under the. This is what we see. These are the. New one that we have configured so far. Whatever we have done, so just to reconfirm that keys, that is the keys that we are giving the queue. Just go back to my TPS. We go to the manage enrollment. We just need to because this is something important that we need to encode it to the device. So we are ready to go with this application. So we can save everything. And we start building that application. So this is SDK using the .NET 6. So it says the successfully. Two project is being because we have the dependency out there. There is a project called color console logger is there. So this project is being. Reference from the thermostats. Now we are ready to go and run this. So. In a couple of seconds, it will start. Popping up the telemetries. This is the telemetries you can say send temperature 13.7. Temperature sent 13.7, so it's basically. You know the temperature is being sent with this. The values kind of things. Is completed. The property updated. There are properties that is getting updated. Writable properties that we are talking about. But now we can go back to the backend solutions. Now, if I refresh that, I will see now the device ID. In fact, you can go back to uh, IoT Hub. Also, previously it was empty. Now, in the IoT Hub, the device also you are going to see that new device. That is being enrolled automatically without going into the manual enrollment. So, so once you go and click on that device, what is happening in that device? So it's give me the detail of the device. But beyond that, what we need to see the IoT plug and play component. So this is the thermostat one that was the model ID that I was talking about. Your device has been discovered as a plug and play devices with an ID called DTMI. Com example thermostat one. So this is a nested property how the device ID is being given. Your model definitions has been resolved from the local folder. Continue your IoT plug and play journey by drilling down to each component that you are going to see. So what is the a component, the default component of this? Model ID so we can jump in there. And you can see how this interface is being configured. What exactly we saw in the previous model 
and this has come in here it talks about command it talks about properties you know it talks about the telemetries that we discuss from the deck itself so so when you go and see a couple of properties out there so there are properties called read only properties this is the temperature is a read only properties the max temperature since the last reboot the max temperature since the last reboot return the max temperature since the last debut double this is that what we can that is the maximum temperatures they are talking about only read only because you are talking about the modeling of your device but there is a properties that can be the target temperatures that you can see it. so already being done allowed to remotely specify the de desired temperature the target temperature that we can set it up reported values like you know 203s acknowledge description they initialize with the default values but if i go and see what has come into the read only that is 13.7 then we can go and make changes on the target temperatures like something like 24. so we can see this the successfully updated the device twin on the device so we are interacting with the underlying device that is being connected from the remote locations from the backend solutions about the property that is being given under the model how it is being defined that device okay so that is something is being done come back and acknowledge you can see now the value is 24 okay so from 13.17 you have see the value become 24 on the telemetry list because you set the target temperature called 24 in the thermostats right so that is something that you can see back into the actual device what is happening at this moment now coming back that is the writable properties that we are talking about a status code is 200 that is successful with the 24 successfully update the target temperature the acknowledged version is 2 the second time we acknowledging the process out there and then at the same time rather than going back to my here to see the telemetries we can also see telemetries from there itself from the back end solution so i just wanted to say start finding the telemetries that i can pull back those telemetries the telemetries is nothing but your te 